What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. If you enjoy the Scale News Update, hit the like button and let's jump into this week's topics. First for this week, Red Cat has released a few new accessories for the 64, which is that low rider hopping vehicle that they released earlier or late last year. Now what they've released is a new set of white wall, low pro uh, spoke style wheels, a actual fabric car cover and a chain link steering wheel. If you're looking for some option parts that are specifically made for your 64, then Red Cat has released that. I've been seeing a few of these out in the wild. If you've got one, be interested to hear what you think about it as well. Did the novelty wear off quickly or do you still find yourself using it? Next, Scalar Fab has released some new Axial JT compatible bumpers and sliders. Now the front and rear bumpers, again, will probably work with the Axial JL. I believe those front and rear bumpers integrate the hidden body post mechanism that Axial's been using to mount those JL and JT bodies. So you can upgrade to an actual metal bumper and still keep that scale style that they integrated. And the rock sliders are marketed specifically towards the JT, probably because of the difference in wheelbase and length between those fender wells. So if you've got one of those vehicles, here's a couple of option parts you can pick up to add some steel to your rig. Now, if you weren't looking to add steel bumpers, but instead just wanted to add weight in a semi-useless position, Energy has you covered with some brass bumper mounts front and rear for your Axial SCX-10 III. So if you like the stock bumpers instead, but want to waste some money anyway, here's an option. Earlier this week, some photos from JD Models had started to pop up and kind of float around the internet, and they're showing the new JD-168. Now, from what we've seen so far posted on some of the forums, this looks like a rolling chassis. No body has been shown that's going to be put on it yet. Now, if you're not familiar or don't remember the name JD Models, they've came out with the Hero before, which RC4 Wheel Drive sold more under the RC4 Wheel Drive name, I believe. I don't know that they put JD Model on it, but it had a Ford Raptor-esque hard body on it. Now, this one has got a scale looking drivetrain underneath of it. It's got a actual, you know, mock engine transmission transfer case. It looks like the engine transmission transfer case is something that JD Models has used in the past. I'm not sure that it was used in the Hero truck. I believe that had something a little bit different, but also with this, it looks like it's going to have locking and unlocking differentials front and rear. Now this does appear to be very much focused on scale. I'm guessing that with the design of some of the things overall, it's not necessarily looked at being the most durable option, but really highly focusing on scale style. I can't tell if the wheels are 1.9 or 2.2. The tires that they're using are a Maxxis Trepidor style overall. It does have a chassis mounted servo up front that's hidden behind a faux radiator. Shocks look like a kind of realistic style coilover mounted in realistic fashion, both front and rear. It'll be interesting to see if they release a body on top of this platform or if it's made to just be a builder's platform that you add whatever your favorite hard body would be to fit this. Haven't seen any real good information on the wheelbase, track width, anything like that. The Photos that I found have mainly been on some of the RC fans website, which is a, a Chinese based forum. So the information that I have been able to find has been hard to get a real good grasp on exactly what we're looking at. But I'm sure that more information will come. And if we see this brought into or sold through a US distributor, it's likely to be RC four wheel drives. A couple weeks back, we talked about a few RC companies that were going up for sale. And one of them, Deluxe Fab, has sold. And it was mentioned on their Facebook page that it was sold to Iron Rock Off-Road. The new owners are said to be taking control shortly and going to phase into the new ownership. So if you've been a fan of Deluxe Fab in the past, Maybe something to take note of with a larger business now taking it over, possible things like delivery speed or inventory numbers could be improved. You could see an actual improvement to certain facets of the business, but at the same time, also have to watch what the actual owner brought to as far as parts design and innovation, watching whether or not that improves, stays the same or goes away. Always interesting to see when a business changes hands. Another delay to speak about this week is the Element Enduro Sendero HD. 
Looks like it's going to be delayed into March at some point. At this point, it's been said that it's expected to be delivered in early March with the actual Chinese New Year just happening. It can be a bit of a slow time. Not sure if with the three week delay, whether or not those are already here, if they actually did leave before Chinese New Year, it's a weird time for it to say that it's supposed to be here by. So if you pre-ordered those, you're gonna be waiting a little bit longer. It looks like early March, best case with Chinese New Year and the delays that that usually causes. Seems like mid-March could be just as likely. For those of you building some very specific scale trucks, RC four-wheel drive Bilstein SZ series shocks are now in stock. These are the 50 and 60 millimeter version. So if you've got a very scale truck with very small travel and you, this is all you can fit, 50 and 60 millimeter, that's about as small as I've ever seen one tenth scale shocks. Touring car shocks, I think sit around that 60 millimeter range. 50 millimeter may be the shortest one that I remember. Next, J Concepts with another banger. Here is the 2005 Ford Expedition body. <laughs> They're doing it on purpose. These bodies don't actually exist. They're just making these up so that I talk about a 2005 Ford Expedition. Before I filmed this show, I searched Ford Expedition monster truck. I'm thinking like, there must be some famous monster truck that ran a Ford Expedition bot. Can't find it. I think they're just messing with me at this point. If you've been thinking about building a scale truck with broken rear suspension, this could be a great candidate. I don't know why they chose a 2005. According to Car and Driver, this was the most unreliable year range of all of the Ford Expeditions, fun fact. I obviously show this being mounted on the low seat LMT. So it's obviously, you know, pointed towards monster truck crowds who like SUV bodies like this, I guess. I just can't pick a situation of going down a list of vehicles and picking a 2005 Ford Expedition for any reason full size or RC. I, I don't know. I'm just waiting for their next model to be based on something more exotic, some mid engine supercharged model, like a Toyota Previa or something like that. On tomorrow's live takeover with Matt from the Scale Builders Guild and myself, we'll be having a guest on and it's going to be Matt Carney, who is the former designer and one of the founders of Axial. He was the designer of the Axial AX10, the SCX10, as well as all the way up to the SCX10 III. Come join in and you can hear about all of the stories he has to tell. Matt from the Scale Builders Guild and myself have known Matt Carney for a long time. Should be a good conversation with a lot of interesting history going way back to the beginning of Axial. So make sure and watch that. Again, the live show is at 6 p.m. Pacific time 9 p.m. on the East Coast. And lastly, if your local hobby shop is a Traxxas dealer, they may have got in a big box of Traxxas calendars. I actually got one in the mail today. So if you've been looking for a calendar, stop into your local hobby shop, you get the 2021-22 calendar with a bunch of Traxxas models and some Traxxas models, in case you're looking for something to throw up on the garage wall. But that does it for this week's news topics. For this week's question though, I wanna know what the last non-RC related thing you got for your RCs was. So not an RC or an RC part or an RC tool that was specifically marketed towards RC. So if you got a belt sander or a shelf, a 3D printer, post it up in the comments below. With that though, thanks for watching the Scale News Update every Tuesday. Make sure and hit the like button if you enjoy these videos. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.